But remember, job description is what matters, not title. Title can be, one place can call it in-house CRA, another place can call it research assistant, another place uh, can call it something else. Yeah, gather your thoughts. But yeah, I will help you with your LinkedIn if you come to California. Uh, I have a Patreon channel, patreon.com slash Um I do everything like marketing, how to use social media to promote yourself. It's, it's my Patreon channel. I don't want to put too much stuff on YouTube. Like I want to keep YouTube just clinical research. So I created a Patreon channel where it's like everything else, like how to market yourself, how to promote yourself, how to use LinkedIn, social media, how to write eBooks. I mean, all these kind of things to get noticed. So if you would want to join Patreon, you can. It's patreon.com slash Dansfera. Uh, but if you come to California, I can help you with your LinkedIn profile. If you don't, I mean, um, it's really not much to do. You're just putting your CV on LinkedIn. Um, as a matter of fact, LinkedIn kind of does it for you. It's not really so much what you put on your LinkedIn. It's more about how you're using LinkedIn. So you got to use it regularly. We just did a webinar today, how to 10X your clinical research opportunities. Like you have to network. On LinkedIn you've got to have conversations with people about clinical research you can't just be a walking infomercial about yourself you have to post things you have to leave thoughtful comments on people's posts you have to approach people with the right angle okay and then that's how you network just like you do in real life when you go on networking events you don't just talk about yourself the whole time right you talk you listen to what other people say and try to find ways to bring them value this is basically how to use LinkedIn and social media in a nutshell to further your career. But these are good questions and these are the right kind of questions to be asking. But yeah, I highly recommend my Patreon. Some job descriptions sound complicated. I agree, <clears throat> even for me, they do. But if you read each sentence line by line and you ignore the jargon, there's really only three things in clinical research like there's only three things when I break it down <clears throat> it's regulatory it's source and it's investigational product that's it so you can get as complicated as you want I mean they can but they're all gonna revolve around those three things everything all right some of them involve all of them some of them involve only one of them some of them involve two of them but that's all it is source regulatory investigational product so I agree with you, job descriptions sound complicated, but it, if you know the fundamentals, which we teach in this class. Oh, another incentive for people to come to California is you get our, our book. We'll give you our book. And signed if you'd like. Comprehensive Guide to Clinical Research. Yeah, if you want it signed, you get it signed. It might be worth less if it's signed. <laughs> this is right. <laughs> because it's used at that point. Yeah. But you, you will get a book too. Um, in Intralink's little known Easter egg, we put our audiobook for free for you guys on, in, on Intralink's already. It's our audiobook files. You should be listening to that too. So this is how right now everybody's nervous about the final. Okay, what I'm telling you guys is what you should be nervous about is networking like crazy to get hired. All right. And this is why I even created that Patreon channel. It's not just for students, but it's for site owners, for people from the industry who want to learn how to use social media better. I don't want to put those things on YouTube because I, I don't want to dilute what I'm saying. Uh, okay, I heard some companies use computer programs to preview resumes. Are there keywords to use? Uh, they use these things, but at the end of the day, what they want is like every company will have a unique needs at that time it's very rare that they're gonna want a standard right they're gonna want maybe somebody wants a tmf specialist right now with oncology experience and maybe that same exact employer next week needs someone with study startup experience with ophthalmology so it just depends you your job is to put experience on your cv and to develop that experience with us you're guaranteed the oncology experience and then if we have a clinic in your area 
you're welcome to go intern with that clinic also. Is being a remote in-house CRA a possibility? No. Mm, not starting out. <clears throat> you, like working from home and not be going to sites? Yeah. No. No. Um, not going to sites and going to an office? Yes. Like an in-house CRA? Yes. Um, so if travel is an issue, like traditional CRA, I would say try to be a coordinator or an in-house CRA. Um, I think later, when you're a senior CRA, you can work from home and have very little travel. But initially, when you're starting out, they want to milk you for all you've got, right? right? Like these sponsors are not playing games. These CROs are not playing games. They want you on site as often as possible. So they're going to work you like crazy. But it happens every class that somebody gets hired in some capacity before. And this person's asking how. How is 10x, 100 applications a month, 100 contacts. You need to leverage the heck out of social media. All right, here's what you do. This is what we talked about on our webinar today. LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn should be obvious. If you need tips on LinkedIn, please, please, Patreon, my Patreon channel, okay? Five bucks a month, you're gonna learn everything on how to market yourself online. Facebook, Facebook groups. I've seen people get hired in clinical research Facebook groups. I'm, ki I'm not kidding. Yeah? Yes. So Facebook, and then Twitter. There's a large clinical research Twitter community. So you need to be on all these things I bet you're on none of them, okay? Not to insult, I'm not talking to anyone in particular, but you guys in general, I bet you're on none of these, or if you are, you just have a profile and you expect people to find you. That's not how it works. You have to go be active, okay? Active uh, on all these networks. Um, another thing you've gotta do is go to the your local chapter, ACRP and Socra. You can go to the local chapter meetings every month or every quarter for free. Guess who is at these meetings? People working in clinical research. Guess what they want to do? They want to scratch your back so you can scratch theirs. They don't need to know you don't work in the industry. Matter of fact, you have experience in the industry because you're going to do the internship with us. Okay, this is what people do, guys. Offline, online. When does one consider CCRA? Um, that's a certified clinical research as associate. That's through SOCRA. Uh, you can do that. I believe they say two. It's either two or three years of work experience that you need to take the CCRA test. I do think if you're planning a career as a CRA for the long term, that it's helpful. I also think the ACRP certification is helpful. The, the ironic thing is, and this is probably, I don't know if it's intentional on their part, SOCRA or ACRP. The ironic thing is once you have two or three years of experience, you don't need this certificate because nobody cares. Nobody cares about a piece of paper. They care about what you've done on your CV. That's a secret in this industry that shouldn't be a secret. Nobody cares if you see CRA or CCRP or ABCD EFG. Nobody cares. They care what's on your CV, what studies you've done. That's what matters. But, but, okay, it doesn't hurt to have that too when you can. But uh, you'll see by that point when you can qualify for this, you you'll think you probably don't need it, and you wouldn't be wrong, All right? But uh, it's it looks nice on your CV. It looks like you took time to be considerate for your own career. So it's it's mainly for aesthetics, really. You can join these groups without being certified and without paying anything. And matter of fact, everyone today, right now, should Google your local chapter ACRP and SOCRA and go to the next meetup. And, and the problem with most people, myself included, is they want results, and, but they don't want to put like the time it takes to, like, it's even me, guys. If I were to apply, me and Chris, we have like a decade, more than a decade of research experience. If we were up to apply today for CRA positions, we to just get an interview, 
We would need at least 10 applications. Me and Chris. Easy, easy. Has nothing to do with us. It has to do with the employer and what they want, all right? And, and the experience you have, what indications. We don't have every single indication on our CV. So you guys are gonna need 100 times this. People give up at two. Somebody asked me on Instagram today. <laughs> today, somebody asked me on Instagram. Dan, I've applied to two positions for a coordinator and I've not heard back yet. I'm freaking out. Um, what am I doing wrong? Okay. And I told them, you're not doing anything wrong. You just need to add two zeros to that two. And then you should be freaking out. Okay. That's, that's what you should be doing. Everyone's flaw, my, mine included. Like, I want more studies for my clinics. Guess what? I'm not applying to enough studies. It's my own fault. We need a, we're building a team to do this. If I want one study, I need to apply to like a hundred for my clinic. It, that one makes it all worth it. And same thing with the job, even more so for a job. And, and here's another takeaway. I don't think it matters what your first position is. They can call you clinical research assistant two, clinical assistant four, whatever title they want to give you. If it's industry experience, it's going to be helpful. Do that for six to 12 months and then you'll get any job you want. Within reason, you can't go from that to being a lead CRA, but you get to write your ticket and then your chances that a hundred applications will now become like 50 and eventually will become 10, like me and Chris. And matter of fact, it might be more than 10 for me and Chris, it might be 20, because we do too much stuff. They don't want generalists, they want specialists. So you're gonna start out as specialists, but then in your career, you wanna be eventually become a generalist because you're immune to market fluctuations. But nobody wants to hire a generalist. See, a generalist is good because they can turn into a specialist whenever they want. Yeah, very quickly. So you're going to start out as a specialist. It doesn't matter where. Just do it. 